So once I settled on Tyranids, I looked at suggestions at what were the vital go-to guys. One of the essentials seemed to be Ripper Swarms. Cheap, deep strike, and enough wounds to have them sit there and keep an objective. But oh dear oh dear, just like the Swarm Lord, they just aren't being sold anymore, and the Forge Weld Dogpile Swarm was out of stock at the time. So I went on eBay, and after a few goes, managed to start snagging some. This worked out pretty grand in the end, because one of the auctions was for a single Tyranid warrior, accompanying three bases of four plus Ripper models. This gave me a spare warrior model, so I could buy three boxes of warriors and turn one of them into the prime, and still keep the full unit of nine. Now didn't that work out a treat? Rather than hold each Ripper with tweezers and blast them with primer individually and lacking double-sided sticky tape and being too lazy to go and get some, I placed a piece of tape along a ruler sticky side up and masking taped it down at either end. Turns out this was the superior method because this way my trusty ruler doesn't end up covered in goop that needs goo gone to clean it off. I dropped the rippers in a line and then sprayed them in a single large group and then set them on their bases. So while I did get the glorious moment of seeing my entire army assembled and primed, when it came to painting them, I realized it would have been much easier to paint them individually before gluing them down. As is, it's going to be tricky to get in there and dry brush without grazing the neighbor, and especially tough to get that ever delicate eyeball dot. While painting my Hormigaunts and Warriors, I continued my research into building my army, and people's online advice had me decide that I might benefit from a decent unit of Termagaunts with Devourers. Unbeknownst to me, and something not reflected on the box cover, when you buy a box of Termagaunts, you get seven Rippers with it. So three boxes of Termagaunts gave me plenty of Rippers to play with and fulfill the three bases I have scheduled for my current army roster. You know, this is starting to feel personal. The reason I'm lumbered with a bootlegged 3D printed torso Swarm Lord is because turns out it is indeed present in the Tyrant box after all, just not readily shown. And fighting to win auctions for Rippers, turns out they came free with boxes I ended up getting anyway. Oh, talk about pissing your money away. Oh. Okay, let's turn that frown upside down. I can now paint them individually and then base them. As to the others, I don't know, maybe I'll just put my previously assembled swarms back on eBay, or just try and pop them off the base and repaint them in the future. This statement is now oddly prophetic. So with my new rippers unpainted and ready to go, I again stretched some tape along a ruler and blasted them all at once with Army Painter Matte Primer. Tweezers did not give me a strong enough grip, but a pair of needle nose pliers with a gentle grasp to the smooth round base worked great for holding them. I applied my McCrag Blue for the skin and Zerus Purple for the carapace and the talons. Each time I did a layer, the tweezers proved exceedingly useful at just sticking them back down on the tape so they could dry in peace. Without the usual vents, joints and gills to slow me down, I only needed to paint those rippers that had their mouths open, with the white scar, so the Nihilic Oxide Technical Paint could get my bioluminescent interior glow. This will become important and highly relevant later on. A wash of Nuln Oil and then dry brushes of Imric Blue Dry on the skin, along the jawlines to accentuate the teeth and cheeks, and then dry brushes of Jean Steeler Purple on the carapace and the talons. So here are my ravenous little bugs, and time to glue them in position which was lots of fun. I wanted a nice mixture of open mouth and closed mouth rippers, and then painted on Elmer's glue all around them, and sprinkled on the slate stone to finish up. I have to admit that there is a certain self-deluded sense of achievement here. 21 models painted in about a day and a bit. Okay, they are teensy tiny and don't have much detail, but still, I feel pretty accomplished. While I was painting, as usual, I began to do research into the bioform itself, 
because all I know is that they are cheap, they deep strike, do little in the way of damage, but are exceedingly useful for object secure. But I'm sure with 40k being the way it is, there would be a bunch of interesting lore and biology outside of the game mechanics. And indeed, I was quite surprised at all the interesting facts about these humble harvesters of biomass, which I'll unleash and preserve in a different video. But for now, what I read gave me a sudden burst of inspiration. I cut some of my other eBay purchased rippers from their base, some came off easy enough, but a few just wouldn't budge, so I had to snip them away at the tail. With the idea I have in mind, this won't present a problem. This also allowed me to use some of the, I guess, discontinued variants, like this upright ripper. I wonder why this was dumped as a design. It's got that coiled and ready to strike image to give a little visual difference from the generic all lunging forward pattern. I painted them up in my blue and purple and got ready to incorporate the new scheme for the base. I delved into my pile of leftovers from assembling things and took a crushing claw from a hive guard and one of the unused heads from my Carnifex brood and painted them up in my high fleet colors. This was doubly useful as I got to practice what I would use when it came to the actual crushing claws as I hadn't actually painted those particular appendages yet, but I also got to dabble with what it will be like to paint my Carnifex brood with old one eye at the forefront. I decided not to use the dab of moot green as the Carnifex is dead and the light has quite literally gone from its eyes. I glued both to the base and just balanced them on a toothbrush to ensure they dried and stayed in place somewhat elevated. I then tore chunks from a pile of dried liquid latex I have. I used to use this for Halloween costume prosthetics, but over the years it hardened, but is still useful for creating stuff. To represent torn flesh, I selected several gobs and arranged them to be the dissolving main body of each slain beastie. I smothered it all with white acrylic and then started dipping a nail in contact cement, twirled it to keep the blob in place and gently dribbled it strategically around the latex. Blowing on it made it harden a little and not seep into and under the latex and then once it had dried for a little while it was tacky enough to dab a nail into the glue and stretch out strands to the rippers leaping out and to the sundered head and severed claw. I glued the rippers into position as though they were leaping out and away from the feast that had riled them up. The ones I had to snip off at the towel, I just slid into the main mass and glued them there. A layer of nylic oxide all over and into every nook and cranny. Then, when dry, a wash of nullen oil and then finally a little bit of white scar dry brushing to accentuate some of the strands and corners of the chunks. Behold, another couple of swarms erupting from the shattered bodies of higher bioforms. A hive guard and Carnifex were gouged apart by artillery fire and toppled to remain lifeless on the field of battle. But then the bodies began to ripple and move, not from regeneration of the beast, but rather as rippers delved into the sundered tissue, gorging on the faintly glowing bioluminescent innards before leaping out, their hunger accentuated. Their need for more biomass peaked so that when gorged, they can slither back to the reclamation pools to be broken down, and they and the mass they have quaffed can be pumped up to the awaiting fleet. Or even more disturbingly, they may go to ground and begin to evolve, using the very flesh of the fallen beasts to rapidly grow into the very creatures upon which they had fed so voraciously. In some ways, this is a terrifying illustration of what makes the Tyranid fleet so relentless and unstoppable. When you slay even the largest and most powerful of the Hive fleet, it is just recycled into more bioforms to serve the Hive mind. And this is the ghastly arithmetic that makes the Tyranids so lethal. If you kill a Tyranid, it is reformed and reactivated. The swarm loses no numbers. But if a Tyranid kills the enemy, it only adds even more to the swarm. 